DEFCON 1 is here with USC and UCLA off to the big 10. If you're new here, these videos are a data-driven look at realignment. And I go through the slides rapid fire, otherwise the video would take forever. So if you need a longer look at the data at any point, just pause. The first slide is predominantly information that these conferences reported on their Form 990. The top two rows are the total revenue they reported fiscal year 2020, fiscal year 2021. In the middle row is the media rights revenue they reported. The exception is the Big Ten. They're the only league of the five not to report their media rights revenue on their Form 990. So we don't know the Big Ten's media rights revenue, but we just know that it's more than $437 million because that's the combination of their Disney and Fox deals. The bottom two rows are the average payouts the conferences distributed to their members. In some cases, like the ACC and Big 12, there was a range. And then with the Big Ten in fiscal year 2020, 12 schools made $54.3 million, while Maryland and Rutgers were on a lower payout. This graph shows the discrepancy between the SEC Big Ten and ACC Pac-12 and Big 12 in total revenues. This graph shows the media rights revenue. Again, we know the Big Ten makes more than $437 million. We just don't know what that number is. And this graph shows the average payouts the leagues distributed to their membership. And of course, with Texas and Oklahoma leaving the Big 12 for the SEC and USC and UCLA leaving the Pac-12, for the Big Ten, these gaps are just going to widen. There's a lot of disagreement over how much control networks have, but if you're someone who subscribes to the theory of networks having a lot of influence, then Disney has pretty much acquired Texas and Oklahoma, while Fox had a counterpunch of USC and UCLA. If you were a Big Ten university president back in the 2000s, you knew that the league had a looming demographic problem. The league was predominantly in locations with stagnant population growth, so over the past 15 years, the league has addressed that demographic weakness by bringing in New York and L.A., as well as Washington, D.C. This gives the Big Ten five of the top 10 media markets in the country and the top three. Here's a chart of the top 26 media markets. The Big Ten is remarkably in the top four media markets, although Dallas-Fort Worth should flip with Philadelphia soon. And some of these are judgment calls, but I'm being a bit liberal in how I place conferences in certain media markets. Like, for example, obviously Penn State is not in the Philadelphia metro area, but I put the Big Ten there because Penn State carries interest in that market. Other examples are the Florida Gators carrying interest in Tampa and Orlando, so that's why I put the SEC in Tampa and Orlando. Big Ten university presidents recognized that within their region, they had a stagnant high school student pool to pull from. So now within a span of about 15 years, they'll have added California which leads the entire country in exporting students out of state. In fact, nearly one in every 10 out-of-state students that attend college are from California. Similar story with New Jersey. New Jersey is third out of all 50 states in exporting college students to other states. And Maryland is eighth. Remarkably, California, New Jersey, and Maryland combine to export 20% of out-of-state students across the country. So Big Ten University presidents saw that as a mechanism to increase the quality and quantity of their application pool. For football recruiting, the Big Ten has added the number three state in California, as well as the number 13 state, New Jersey, and the number 17 state in Maryland. The Wall Street Journal has a very elaborate database where it shows where each college's graduates move after they graduate. And every single Big Ten school had in between one to 5% of their alumni moving to the LA metro area after college. So by getting into LA, this is an effective way for Big Ten University presidents to re-engage the, their alumni in the LA market. It's a similar story with the number of Big Ten alumni in the Bay Area, which we'll get to later. Big Ten University presidents have always cared highly about academics, and UCLA and USC are both AAU schools. UCLA is ranked number 20 in US News and number 11 in Shanghai while USC is number 27 in U.S. News and number 32 in Shanghai. Big Ten presidents also care a lot about your research and development expenditures, and UCLA ranks seventh of all colleges in the country at $1.31 billion. USC is 27th nationally at $910 million. The rest of the video will be evaluating the remaining Pac-12 schools in the context of Big Ten expansion. The first thing we'll look at is TV ratings. I calculated the average viewers from 2012 through 2021. Although I excluded 2020, the COVID season is ratings were down everywhere. And I instituted some rules in these calculations to try and get 
in apples to apples comparison as best as possible. First, only regular season conference games counted. So no bowls, no out of conference games, no conference championship games. And then no games versus USC or UCLA counted as I wanted to isolate USC or UCLA's influence on the ratings. I also excluded any reverse mirror or regional split games. And I also did not include ABC as after tailing everything up, there was a very limited amount of ABC games that fit my limited criteria as only four teams had multiple games even meeting the criteria I instituted. Also, if you see one asterisk on these charts, it means that's a one game sample size. If you see two asterisks, that means that it's a two game sample size. Otherwise, everything would be a sample size of three games or more. So first up are Fox ratings, and these are divided into Friday games, then daytime games, then primetime games. And then the final column is all games combined. The top three on Fox ratings were Oregon, Colorado, and Stanford. Next up is FS1 ratings, and these are divided into Friday, daytime, primetime, late night. And then the final column is the average of all games. The leaders for FS1 ratings were Oregon, Washington, and Oregon State. Next up is ESPN ratings. These are divided up into Thursday, Friday, daytime, primetime, and late night. In the final column is the average of all games. The leaders for ESPN ratings were Oregon, Washington, Stanford, and Cal. And finally, here are the ESPN2 ratings, although a lot of these were no to little sample size. Of the teams with more than a two-game sample size, Oregon, Washington, and Washington State rated well. Next up is academics. Of the remaining 10 Pac-12 schools, seven of them are AAU. Stanford and Cal are elite academically, as Stanford is number six in U.S. News and number two in Shanghai, and Cal is number 22 in U.S. News and number four in Shanghai. So we're going to eliminate the three non-AAU schools, Arizona State, Oregon State, and Washington State as I believe Notre Dame is the only non-AAU school who could get voted into the Big Ten. Nebraska is not AAU currently, but when they were voted into the Big Ten, they were AAU. Research is also very important in the Big Ten, and here are the R&D expenditures. Washington spent the fifth most of any college in the country at $1.43 billion. Stanford was number 11 at $1.2 billion. Here's a look at demographics. The first column is their media market. For Arizona and Oregon, I've included Phoenix and Portland because even though Arizona and Oregon aren't physically located in those media markets, they have a pretty sizable presence within those markets. The second column is their market's CSA ranking and then the 10-year growth in parentheses. With Arizona on the left is Phoenix and on the right is Tucson. And with Oregon, I've used Portland even though technically Eugene is not in the Portland CSA. And then the final column is the state's population rank, and then in parentheses, the state's tenure growth. Since Big Ten presidents are looking to expand their student applicant pool, here is where each state would rank in the number of college students exported to other states. California, as mentioned earlier, exports more students to other states than any state in the country. And then in parentheses is the number of out-of-state students at U.S. colleges that come from that state. So with California, nearly 1 in 10 out-of-state students in the country come from California. And in the right-hand column is that particular state's football recruiting rank. This slide is taking information from the Wall Street Journal database where graduates move after college. And it shows how many Big Ten schools have between 5 and 10% of their alumni moving to the Bay Area or Denver or Seattle or Phoenix or Portland or Salt Lake City. And then the middle column is 1 to 5% of each Big Ten school's alumni. And then the final column is how many Big Ten schools have less than 1%. So locations with a lot of alumni from particular Big Ten schools is viewed as an asset to university presidents because they can reconnect and re-engage with their alumni and foster relationships that can turn into donations. This slide is from the Wall Street Journal database. And what Wall Street Journal did is they ranked the value of each college football program. I've tweaked it a bit and removed all Big Ten teams, all SEC teams, as well as USC, UCLA, Texas, and Oklahoma to filter a everyone else who's left on the board type ranking. And once all current and future Big Ten and SEC schools are removed, Washington was ranked number two and Oregon was ranked number three. 
This slide is where each athletic department ranked in terms of their revenues according to the USA Today database. Oregon most recently had the highest athletic revenue in the country. Of course, this database only has public schools. So putting everything together, here's an expansion comparison chart. The first column shows how these seven schools all check off the AAU box. The second column is their R&D expenditures and then where that ranked nationally. The next two columns are each school's ranking in U.S. News in Shanghai. Then it's each school's endowment. Then the DMA ranking and the CSA ranking along with the 10-year growth rate of that CSA. Of course, technically, Oregon and Arizona are not in the Portland and Phoenix markets, but you get the picture. Then there's a trio of columns with state rankings. The first one of those is the state's population ranking, and then right below that, it's 10-year growth. Then it's the state's ranking in the number of college students exported out of state, with the percentage being the percentage of U.S. out-of-state students that come from that state. And then finally, that state's football recruiting rank. The Wall Street Journal value column is the college football value rank per Wall Street Journal. Of course, all current and future Big Ten and SEC programs are removed. The next column is the athletic revenue rank per the USA Today database. Of course, that is only public schools. Then the next three columns are about Big Ten alumni and the number of schools whose alumni in that percentage range, whether it's 5 to 10%, 1 to 5%, or under 1%, live within the desired metro area, whether that's Seattle, Phoenix, the Bay Area, Denver, Salt Lake City. And then the final four columns are the average viewers from 2012 through 2021. Of course, the 2020 season was excluded. Games against USC or UCLA were excluded. Any bowls or conference championship games or out-of-conference games were excluded. So this was regular season conference games only. And any reverse mirror or regional split games were excluded. So it's pretty obvious that the Big Ten's dream target is Notre Dame. And the Big Ten strategy right now appears to be trying to force Notre Dame's hand with the ever-widening TV revenue disparity and locking in USC. And in my opinion, Stanford is the next carrot that the Big Ten is going to dangle to Notre Dame. Why Stanford? Well, Notre Dame sees Stanford as an academic peer. They also play them annually in football. Stanford is an AAU school. They're ranked number two in Shanghai and number six in U.S. News. Stanford is the biggest academic get you can have across FBS football. They're like an Ivy League school playing FBS football. Stanford has an unbelievable $38 billion endowment. Of course, they're in the number six media market in the number three state for football recruiting. And they're also in the state that exports more college students to other states than any state in the country. And the Bay Area is home to over 1% of alumni from every single Big Ten school. And athletically, Stanford won 25 consecutive Directors' Cups from 95 through 2019. Of course, there's legal hurdles if Notre Dame is interested. Their NBC contract runs through 2025, and the ACC contract runs through 2036. That requires Notre Dame to join the ACC if they join a conference. Now, if Notre Dame is not doable... Here's the case for the Big Ten to stay put at 16. If you stay at 16, everyone gets to play in L.A. every second year with the 3 plus 6 of 12 format. An expansion beyond 16 diminishes that direct L.A. exposure to every third or fourth year instead of every second year. Also, the bar for each addition to raise the Big Ten's annual average value grows more astronomical. After the USC and UCLA additions, it's possible that only a Notre Dame anchored expansion could top that. However, my prediction, if Notre Dame says no, is that the Big Ten will move to 20 with Washington, Oregon, Cal, and Stanford. And the Big Ten's end game would be to wait until the ACC grant of rights issue resolves itself before pursuing expansion to 24. I think their targets would be Notre Dame, Virginia, Duke, and North Carolina whether that time comes in 12 years, 10 years, 5 years, 2 years, or now. Now, if Notre Dame is able to finagle itself out of that ACC contract and they're willing to join the Big Ten, I think the Big Ten will add Washington, Notre Dame, Cal, and Stanford, and Oregon would be the odd man out initially, as university presidents prioritize the academic and research affiliations with Washington, Cal, and Stanford. And Portland is not as critical to the Big Ten school student recruitment and alumni distribution as the Bay Area in Seattle. However, I think Oregon would join the Big Ten in a later expansion to 24 once the ACC schools become fully available, whenever that is. So they'd be joining or targeted alongside Virginia, Duke, and North Carolina.